welcome to all welcome to our uh, official youtube channel of our college sr and bgnr government arts and science college come on and uh, myself dr b satish kumar assistant professor in biochemistry uh, in last few classes i was uh, explaining the topics pertaining to molecular biology and uh, this is this molecular biology is subject uh, present in uh, semester 6th of final year students in bsc biochemistry students and it is core paper and in this we have four units first unit pertaining to replication and transcription second unit is for translation so so far we have learned about replication transcription post transcriptional modifications and uh, in translation the genetic code is also completed in last uh, two video lessons in the first video lesson of genetic code i have covered the features of genetic code and uh, definition of genetic code and uh, just in the pre previous video lesson we have seen how the genetic code is deciphered by three different experiments okay so now we move to the next uh, topic that is structure of trna in this video lesson we are going to study about the structure of trna yeah the structure of trna and uh, second one is this topic the oval hypothesis and uh, degeneracy of genetic code and uh, third one is uh, the ribosome structure okay these three are very essential and uh, this uh, for the understanding of translation process so far we have an idea about the genetic code and uh, using that genetic code we can easily elucidate the amino acid sequence from the nucleoside nucleotide sequence of mrna so if we have given a particular mrna sequence we can write the amino corresponding amino acid sequence of a polypeptide chain which is synthesized from that mrna molecule by using the knowledge of genetic code okay in last two classes we have discussed um, in in details about the genetic code so now in today's class the structure of trna which is an adapter molecule that plays a key role in translating the genetic code to a amino acid sequence and oval hypothesis uh, this is part of genetic code that um, where we will uh, find out how the 61 codons codes for 20 different amino acids because uh, more codons are there and less amino acids are there okay so how different codons codes for same amino acids do they require more number of trna molecules or uh, simply uh, same trna molecule uh, identify with uh, different codes that code for same amino acid so synonymous codes they are called synonymous codes okay all those codons which codes for same amino acid are called synonymous codon so synonymous codons are coded by are recognized by different trna molecules are same only one trna molecule is enough to identify more than one synonymous codons okay so that we will um, see in detail in 
mobile hypothesis and finally the structure of ribosome so uh, in translation we have three important um, components of translation first one is the ribosomes okay we will have the ribosomes large subunits small subunits and uh, small subunits binds mrna molecule and the tRNA molecules binds to the ribosomes and they interact with the codons by their anticodons okay and they carry out the and they carry the specific amino acids so that is why in this video lesson uh, we will study the structure of tRNA and as well as the ribosomes so, um, um, and we have already some uh, required knowledge about mRNA molecule and uh, so that we have covered in uh, uh, transcription topic ok so let us start with the structure of tRNA so in the last class uh, uh, we have discussed about how the genetic code is deciphered by using three different experiments and uh, we have we add we had some knowledge about the genetic code and uh, finally now we start with structure of tRNA okay so in the tRNA structure so this is the tRNA structure okay so it acts as an adapter molecule it acts as an adapter molecule so uh, in the last few classes i uh, roughly drawn the structure the expected structure of tRNA as an adapter so the tRNA must be like uh, so we can expect the structure like this because with one end it recognize the codon okay so it has anticodon that base pairs with the codon of mrna okay and at the opposite end it carries the specific amino acid okay if the codon is a a a then it is it carries lysine if the codon is u u u then it carries phenylalanine in if the codon is c c c it carries proline and if the codon is uh, uh, suppose a u g it carries methionine like that okay so there must be at least two ends one end is required for recognize uh, recognition of codon on mrna and another end opposite end requires to carry that specific amino acid specific for the codon okay so that is the basic required structure of a trna so when we look at the structure of tRNA we have this type of two dimensional structure so we it is in fact it is in three dimensional structure this is the original structure of the tRNA so when we simplify it and write it on a plain paper we will get this kind of 2D structure in this 2D structure is a clover leaf structure okay three leaves containing clover leaf structure clover leaf um, will be like uh, uh, some uh, that leaf it will be like you we will have one leaf and you will have another leaf and you will have third one so this kind of structure is the clover leaf structure okay so that same kind of clover leaf structure uh, it has that uh, the tr so in that uh, trna structure uh, we are having so this specific sequence uh, sorry this specific arm this arm is for identification of arm uh, it, it carries the anticodon and this anticodon interacts with the codon in the mRNA so that is why it is anticodon loop anticodon arm okay we have stem mind loop structures three stem mind loop structures and one stem loop stem structure okay one two and three stem mind loop structures 
okay these stem and loop structures or hairpin like structures we have already encountered in a, we came across with these kind of uh, structures in a termination of transcription okay so that is why here the stem and loop structures so first stem and loop structure is anticodon loop which contains anticodon sequence that is essential for the base pairing to the codon in mRNA mole. So at the opposite end, this is this end is required for the binding or uh, for the attachment of specific amino acid. So that is why it is called amino acid accepting site or attachment site. Okay. So this uh, end is having this is the three prime end of the tRNA. Okay. So at the three prime end, the three prime hydroxy group accept the amino acid. Okay, so there is uh, a bond formation between the oxygen of three prime hydroxy and uh, the carboxy oxygen, the COO minus will be there on the amino acid. So that oxygen interacts with this oxygen. So uh, a acyl bond is formed between these two oxygens. So now that is ac amino acid accepting arm. So we always have a CCA sequence, CCA sequence at here, CCA sequence for all tRNA molecules. Okay, CCA sequence are there for all tRNA molecules. So on the A that is the last nucleotide of tRNA sequence that carries or attaches attaches to the specific amino acid okay so that is the second arm and we, we have two more arms or loops so one is DHU loop and the next one is T C loop okay so based on the uh, modified basis present in the loop the loops will be named so that loop name uh, is, uh, will be named after the modified new modified nucleotides that it contains so we have dihydrouridine dihydrouridine nucleotide or base in this loop so that is why it is called as dihydrouridine dhu loop okay so and uh, uh, pseudothymine is there so that is why it is uh, um, uh, T C C loop okay so you have some number of modified bases apart from apart from four regular bases that is A U G C we have some modified bases also in tRNA structure so based on those modified nucleotides modified bases these loops were named okay so finally completely we have four four ends one is uh, the anticodon loop contains anticodon that specifically interacts with specific codon on mRNA and another opposite end is uh, the uh, mm, amino acid attachment site amino acid accepting arm which has amino acid attachment site and the end sequence is a CCA sequence so amino, uh, amino acid will be attached to the 3 prime hydroxy of the terminal uh, terminal base that is A with the carboxy with the carboxy group of amino acid okay so and uh, remaining two are dhu loop dihydrouridine loop and t C loop okay so this is the structure of uh, tRNA and uh, we have a, a short arm extra arm or also known as variable arm uh, in some tRNAs some tRNAs are little bit larger than in the remaining tRNA molecules. In fact, the tRNA molecules are very small RNA molecules when compared with the rest of the molecules 
RNA molecules like uh, mRNA and rRNA. So we have uh, three different types of RNA molecules. So first one is rRNA, second one is uh, mRNA and third one is tRNA. Okay, rRNA stands for ribosomal RNA. So they are essential for the construction of ribosomes. The ribosome, the structure of ribosome contains proteins and rRNA components. And mRNA are messenger RNA which carries the message for the synthesis of uh, polypeptide chain. So that is they, uh, when they, when mRNA is translated, trans, uh, translated uh, we will get a corresponding polypeptide chain. So they involve in the synthesis of polypeptide chain. They carry the message. In fact, all these three uh, RNA molecules involved in the translation, but the message lies with the mRNA. Okay. So, and the tRNA, tRNA, final one is the tRNA, which is smallest among the three. And the tRNA is a, uh, an adapter molecule uh, which uh, recognize the specific codons and uh, incorporate the specific amino acid into the polypeptide chain. Okay, so that is the tRNA. So here <coughs> the tRNA structure is this and some of the tRNAs may not have this extra arm and some tRNAs may have this extra arm. So that is the variable arm. Okay, so this is about <coughs> the structure of tRNA. So now look at the uh, general features of uh, tRNA. So I briefly explained about the structure of tRNA and uh, now uh, let us go into the details of tRNA structure. So first uh, for the first time Robert Hawley is the scientist who uh, deduced the cloverleaf structure of yeast alanine tRNA. So for each amino acid we have a separate tRNA molecule. Okay, one tRNA molecule carries only one kind of amino acid. Okay, so at least 20 different tRNAs are required by each and every organism to specify 20 different amino acids. Okay, minimum 20 are essential. In fact, uh, because each tRNA carries only one specific amino acid. So, Yeast from yeast, he has isolated alanine tRNA. That tRNA carries alanine amino acid. Okay, he first time isolated that one and uh, characterized it. And uh, uh, he found out that tRNAs are very small molecules, and uh, uh, the length of the tRNA is tRNA molecules uh, around uh, uh, range from 76 to 90 nucleotides. Okay, very short RNA, single stranded RNA molecules, but they uh, they will have self complementary sequences because of that they form stem and loop structures and finally that will give uh, the secondary and as well as tertiary structure of tRNAs. Okay, it appears like double stranded structure, but in fact they are single stranded molecules, they interacted with it. Uh, uh, within uh, within the molecule and uh, so self complementary sequences that is why it has uh, uh, the double stranded regions where uh, we observe the stem structures and uh, wherever there is no interaction um, among the um, bases then we will get the loop structures stem and loop structures are common in tRNA structure so it uh, third point is it acts as uh, adapter molecule uh, several times i mentioned it it contributes 10 to 20 percent of cell cellular rna so more the mm, in fact the rrna is the abundant rna among the three different rna molecules okay 10 to 10 20 percent is contributed by tRNA molecules and only around five percent is contributed by mRNA and the remaining quantity of RNA is uh, contributed by rRNA molecules. Okay, so uh, as we already uh, seen uh, discussed that folding that uh, folding takes place upon itself 
and it forms secondary structures and it forms stem and loop structures because of self complementary sequences it resembles the structure resembles flow reef structure when we write it or uh, uh, write it in 3d structure but in fact in 3d structure in 2d structure it is uh, it is in flow reef structure in 3d structure it appears like a twisted l that l letter capital l letter if we twist it you will get a twisted l so that twisted l it uh, it will be in twisted l when we uh, see uh, the trna in three dimensional structure so it has uh, four arms one dihydrouridine and uh, pseudouridine sorry pseudouridine dihydrouridine arms and uh, mm, the important arms are anticodon arm and amino acid accepting arm okay so along with uh, these four arms uh, uh, we may have a small variable arm in case of uh, some trna molecules and the very important feature that we have to remember uh, in case of trna molecules is it all uh, each and every trna is having uh, CCS sequence at the three prime end of the trna molecule that will be attached with the specific amino acid okay so this on the right side of this slide we have the twisted l shape of uh, trna so this is the three dimensional structure of trna so this one so this is like l shape okay so and this l shape is twisted and here also twisted so this is what the twisted l shape so we have uh, the anticodon arm you have d arm dh arm and this is the extra arm and, and amino acid accepting arm okay and you have t size c arm so all these uh, arms are there the twisted l shape uh, that is uh, you can see this shape in three dimensional structure okay so that is about the trna and uh, let's uh, uh, study the structure of ribosomes first so the ribosomes ribosomes are the factories the factories where translation takes place so it gives a yes, physical support for the translation missionary and uh, the ribosomes are the component uh, are the active parts where the remaining components of translation missionary comes and assembles so we have two different types of ribosomes prokaryotic ribosomes and eukaryotic in prokaryotes we have 70 s type of ribosomes and in eukaryotes we have 80 s type of ribosomes in prokaryotes 70 s each and every uh, each the ribosomal complex contains two subunits one is small subunit and another one is large subunit okay small subunit is 30s type and large subunit is 50s s stands for swedberg unit that is not the actual weight of the uh, what you call the ribosome subunit okay it uh, it is measured on the sedimentation coefficient okay so that is why it is 50s and 30s when both are combined with each other we will get only 70s okay so now this is about the prokaryotic ribosome and in case of eukaryotic eukaryote also you will have the same large subunit and small subunit small is 40s type and large is 60s and when we combine both we will get 80s subunit okay. so that is about the ribosome so here the ribosomes are the physical structures and these ribosomes contains two things 
first one is rRNA rRNA it contains rRNA plus ribosomal proteins so it is a mixture of protein and RNA component okay so both large subunit and as well as small subunit so these are uh, essential the rRNA component and uh, its, uh, its uh, ribosomal proteins are essential for the formation of ribosomes okay so now when we look at the composition of uh, these uh, ribosomes in prokaryotic 70s type the 30s contains 16s rRNA 16s type of rRNA and 21 different proteins 21 proteins it has and 16s rRNA it is very much important uh, to remember okay 16 years rRNA is present in 30 years and in 50 years you have two types of RNA rRNA first one is 23 years and the second one is 5 years rRNA two rRNAs and 34 different proteins okay so finally we have three different type of rRNA molecules in case of prokaryote 16 years present in 30 30 years small subunit and 23 years plus 5 years present in the large subunit and in case of eukaryotes we have mm, uh, the similar kind of rRNAs uh, in 40 years instead of 16 we have 18 but uh, in large subunit you have three rRNAs that is 28 years and same 5 years and 5.8 years okay so these are the ribosomes so the ribosomes contains two components rRNA molecules and along with the ribosomal proteins okay so to these ribosomes what happens the function of the ribosome is they bind the mRNA molecule like this and they also bind the tRNA molecules okay so this ribosome structure provides a provides a platform where the association of mRNA and tRNA takes place okay so now this ribosome moves along the mRNA molecule from 5 prime to 3 prime direction ribosome moves along the mRNA molecule so as it moves the the tRNA molecules the specific tRNA molecules based on the uh, codon based on the codon that is bound by ribosome the specific tRNA comes and binds to the ribosome so here a specific interaction the specific tRNA uh, interacts with the specific codon and it carries the specific amino acid so this takes place uh, in a cyclic manner okay so gradually what happens the ribosome moves fast moves through the sequence of mRNA and uh, 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 and reads it reads the codon sequence and uh, for each and every codon a specific tRNA will will be associated with that and it incorporates a amino acid into the polypeptide chain so now the peptide bond formation also takes place between the successive amino acids and uh, you, you will get a polypeptide chain here okay this is what the um, process of food translation so we require the ribosomes okay we require ribosomes tRNA molecules and mRNA so these are the basic requirements for the translation to occur okay so now the last topic of this video lesson is oval hypothesis so uh, oval hypothesis is uh, proposed by Crick Watson uh, Watson and Crick they are the scientists who proposed the double helical structure of DNA so among Watson and Crick you have uh, Crick who proposed set of four relations called oval hypothesis so he explained how the degeneracy occurs in the genetic code how a same tRNA molecule that carries a specific amino acid 
can recognize more than one codons. The anticodon of a specific tRNA can recognize more than one codons. So how it is possible? He explained uh, that thing by four different uh, relationships that is called obul hypothesis. So here the obul means uncertainty. So there is some uncertainty between the interaction, the uncertainty in the interaction between the codon and anticodon. So that is what the obul, obul hypothesis. So in the obul hypothesis, he proposed four relationships. So the first relationship is here. The first two bases of an mRNA codon always form strong Watson-Crick base pairs with the corresponding basis of the tRNA anticodon and confirm most of the coding specificity. Okay. So let us look at the code, the codon and anticodon interaction in the tRNA. Okay. So this is the codon and anticodon interaction. So this is mRNA and this is the tRNA. So tRNA is carrying amino acid. So the tRNA which carries a specific amino acid is called a charged tRNA. So without amino acid the tRNA is known as uncharged tRNA or discharged tRNA. Okay. So you have a charged tRNA that interacted with the specific codon on mRNA. So the codon is 1, 2, 3 in this case. Okay. Anticodon is 1, 2, 3 in the opposite direction. Okay. So now the 1 is the first base in the uh, codon, sec 2 is the second base and third is the third base. But in case of anticodon, here it goes in the other direction. So here that 1 is the first base but that interacts with the third, third one. Okay, the interaction between uh, codon and anticodon, if you look at this interaction, you will see that third base of the codon interacts with the first base of the anticodon. And first ba base of the codon interacts with the third base of the anticodon. So, because they are in anti-parallel direction. Okay. So, here the first relationship explains that First two, co first two nucleotides in the codon. So that is 192. Okay. 192 nucleotides or bases in the codon will form strict Watson-Crick base pairing rules. Okay. They will, they will follow the strict Watson-Crick base pairing rules and they will confer most of the coding specificity. So that means uh, most of the specificity depends on these first two nucleotides of the codon or the last two nucleotides of the nucleotides of the anticodon okay there is strict watson crick base pairing rules that means if a is there in the at, at this place at one you have a so then you always have u in the trna if it is g it will be c and nothing else okay so there is strict Watson Crick base pairing rules that is that is followed by the first two bases only. But what about the third base? Okay, that will not follow strictly those rules. It will not follow uh, strictly. So that means uh, it can also interact with more than one basis. So that that we will see in the uh, next relationship. So here. The second uh, point is the first base of anticodon okay, determines the number of codons recognized by the tRNA. Okay. So that means here the first base of anticodon, the first base, the one is the first base and uh, this first base of the anticodon that recognizes how many number of codons can be recognized by this tRNA because this this is the oval base and uh, this first nucleotide bus first base of this anticodon can interact with more than one basis on in the 
four down okay so that is why so it is the key that recognizes the number of uh, codons okay to understand this easily uh, we will get back to the genetic code table where we can easily identify e e uh, uh, what is the striking difference between the synonymous codons uh, in the last class i have already explained that uh, those codons which codes for the same amino acid are called synonymous codons okay so now uh, let us have a look at the genetic code table in this genetic code table if this if we take the first example phenylalanine you have uh, for the phenylalanine you have u u u u u c u u a u u g so these four codons codes for uh, sorry uh, one, two codons sorry u u u u u c so these two codons and uh, for example if we take the second case c u u codes for leucine c u c c u a c u g so what we will observe in this uh, um, code synonymous codes that uh, the first two bases are c and u and remaining the third base is not important here whether it is u or c or a or g whatever it may be if you have c and u as the first and second base then it it will code for leucine only it will code for leucine only so that trna is ignoring ignoring the third base ignoring the third base that that strictly depending on the first two bases of the codon and ignoring the third base so whatever the base it may be at the third position of the codon but if it is c c as the first base and u as the second base then it can uh, it will be uh, it will code for leucine so that means the first relationship is here that first two bases in the codon forms watson crick base pairing so strict watson crick base pairing base pairs therefore they confer the most of the coding specificity they confer most of the coding specificity so coding specificity is confirmed by these two bases only cu just cu codes for leucine here and we don't uh, we, we we don't have to consider the third um, base it it may be anything out of the four you write anything just that cu code for leucine so that is the first point and the second point is the third base in the codon or the first base in the anti codon so that will recognize how many number of codons are uh, recognized by same amino acid so how many synonymous codons are possible for a specific trna so that depends on the first base of the anti codon or this third base of the codon okay so that is the second a relationship okay so for that we have a specific table we have a specific table and uh, in this table you can see that uh, these these are the first basis of anticodon these are the first basis of anticodon if the first base is c so at here if you have c it strictly base pairs it recognizes only g in mrna if it is a it recognizes u only okay so up to here there is no problem okay watson crick base pairing rules but if it is g normally it interacts with c and along with c another pyrimidin c is pyrimidin and u also pyrimidin so along with c it also interacts with u so that means uh, at the uh, third position of the codon if you have c or u both both codons are recognized by the anti codon which contains g at the first place okay so and uh, in case of in case if it has uh, u only u it can interact the a with a and g also okay if it has inosin then it can interact with c 
and a and u so that means if a tRNA is having i inosin i as the first base first base of the anticodon so then then what happens it recognizes three different codons if you have u if you have u at the first place it will recognize two codons if it is has g it recognizes two codons if it has a it recognizes only one codon if it is has c it recognizes only one codon so so by this way that can recognize uh, more than one maximum three codons codons so a single trna molecule uh, it can recognize maximum three uh, one two three codons okay so when we look at the uh, uh, if we go back to the genetic code table and when we look at the degeneracy of genetic code you you will you can observe that uh, there are some there are some codons uh, six more than four that six number of synonymous codons are there which can code for same amino acid for example uh, this leucine we, uh, for leucine we have six codons okay two here four here okay so like that and uh, mm, uh, many more are there and for arginine also we have six okay and um, so valine uh, you have four and uh, alanine you have four serine four proline four theanine four so like that some some are having four and some are having six some are having two and some are having only one okay methionine aug so that is only uh, that is having only one codon okay so you know, according to the second uh, relationship according to the second relationship uh, only uh, if uh, if it has i inosin as the first base in anticodon then it can recognize maximum three codons but what about uh, the amino acids which are coded by six codons okay so that is explained by the third point in the third point when amino acid is specified by several different codons like more than three okay the codons that differ in their in either of the first two bases require different trnas okay so here you can uh, again go back to the genetic code uh, if we look at uh, this uh, uh, leucine if you look at the leucine uh, you will see these four these four uh, are having first two bases in common but the remaining these two these two are having uh, different first two bases okay so that is why uh, the change is present in the first two bases but in case of these four you have only the difference at the third base of the codon okay so in this case what happens you will always need different trna molecules okay different trna molecules so that is the third point of the uh, oval hypothesis so if the difference occurs at the first two bases so then it requires a different trna molecules okay so nine uh, so therefore you can easily uh, guess how many number of trna molecules are required minimum number of trna molecules are required to specify that 61 codons okay to recognize 61 codons so uh, on, on that basis <coughs> on the basis of that table you, know, you can find out that a minimum of 32 trnas are required to translate all 61 codons minimum 32 trnas are there so more than 32 is not a problem but minimum 32 must be required to recognize or translate 61 codons so that is the minimum number okay 
so that is what the oval hypothesis so in the oval hypothesis the first nucleotide of anticodon and third nucleotide of the codon the base pair uh, the base pairing between these two nucleotides is uh, is not uh, perfect so that some flexibility is there because of that flexibility uh, the uh, first base in the anticodon may recognize more than one uh, bases in the codon so that is why one anticodon of a trna may recognize maximum three codons maximum three number of codon so that is here uh, you uh, we have uh, diagrammatically explained here leucine leucine is having uh, leucine carrying trna now it is having uh, the anticodon gau so that strictly recognizes cua okay and cug also because u recognizes a and u also recognizes g that we have observed in the table okay u recognizes two bases a and g so therefore two codons can be recognized by the same trna molecule two codons okay and uh, when we look at uh, the case of glycine in case of glycine you have uh, inosine i as the first base in the anticodon so now what happens i i except g it recognizes all three bases it can recognize u it can recognize c and it it can recognize yes so therefore what happens the same glycine trna can recognize three different codons okay this is what the oval hypothesis and this is the oval base okay uncertainty in the between the interaction of first base in the anticodon and third base in the codon that led to recognition of more than one codons by the same trna molecules okay so that is what that explains how the degeneracy takes place in the genetic code so that is about the degeneracy of genetic code and oval hypothesis uh, which is uh, one of the very important question uh, in this uh, unit okay i hope you understand uh, this the concept of oval hypothesis where you have only four different postulates and you have to remember the table okay so which base can recognize which bases in mrna molecules okay, that's all thank you all